are talking Pillow Party Massacre. This one is directed by Calvin Maury McCarthy, who also wrote the movie. Now, you may be thinking this sounds a little bit similar to the Slumber Party Massacre. And I haven't seen that movie, to be honest, but I have obviously heard of it. And I think this is a kind of a loose remake, uh, certainly paying homage to that movie. And although this movie is a modern movie taking place in contemporary times, it certainly has some 80s aesthetics. So what is the story? Well, it focuses on a group of female friends as they are kind of having a reunion. We see in a uh, kind of a prologue at the beginning of the movie, there is a kind of a party at school and it's around kind of April. So they're kind of doing April Fool's pranks and they they do play a prank on one of their friends, which kind of humiliates them and ultimately sends this kind of friend into a somewhat of a uh, bad mental state and then she commits a um, essentially a school shooting. So cut to some time later we have this friends reuniting to try and kind of re-piece their kind of friendship together, uh, maybe kind of exercise some of their kind of internal demons but we find out that there is a uh, killer uh, who is seemingly targeting them but also pretty much anyone else in the area if we're being honest. Uh, as well as, you know, there, there's rumours of a, of a kind of a breakout and in a mental asylum. Could this be something, uh, a, a, you know, a, a ghost from the past, so to speak? Or is it something completely different? Uh, we all have these girls kind of holed up in this house. And yes, there is a pillow fight. And now what will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So I've reviewed a, a number of McCarthy's movies in the past on the channel. And he's asked me to actually review this one. Uh... So I will say, uh, from a directorial standpoint, I definitely see uh, some um, more confidence in the direction here. While I was watching this, I was even of the initial scene. Let's just take the prologue for example. I thought there's a, there's there's a real confidence in the directing here. I thought there were some stylistic choices, uh, and that's to me when you 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 know you'll see kind of a, a, a confidence in the directing when when someone kind of wants to kind of stamp their. Uh, style on it and have stylistic choices. And I have to say, I do think um, McCarthy has evolved as a filmmaker uh, to a you know to a pretty good standard now. I have to say, and I kind of quite enjoy the direction of this movie. Um, certainly, the most confident of the of the films I've seen of him so far. And it's, this movie definitely, I think, plays to fans of the original movies, like the kind of Slumber Party Massacre. And even though it not being kind of set in the 80s, it does a good job here of kind of having an 80s kind of feel without kind of having it set in the 80s or kind of doing one of these kind of like, you know, faux kind of retro films. It's, it's, it's straddles a line pretty well, I have to say. I actually got the movie at its best when there's some quite good dramatic moments within the film as well. Our, our characters all have different opinions about how to, you know, mentally deal with the kind of the situation that had happened before in their past and I found that kind of exploration you know pretty interesting to be honest so there is some uh it's some deeper kind of psychological issues at well but at the heart this is still a kind of like schlocky slasher film it just has these kind of moments um peppered throughout which I thought were, were all pretty good there is uh, some fairly good kills here, and, and it's mostly practical effects you'll see on display here. There's a little bit of kind of CGI blood, but for the majority of it, uh, there is uh, practical kills, and the majority of which you kind of see on screen as well. So I kind of think um, you know fans would kind of enjoy that. If you're not familiar with the kind of the, uh, the kind of the Slumber Party Massacre, as like I said, I haven't actually seen that film, but I'm aware of it. There is a kind of like uh, comparison to can be met, that can be made for the likes of kind of Scream and things like that also. So if you're, if, you know, if you're more in, interested in kind of modern horror, I think the Scream uh, movie, the, the, probably the original one, is a kind of a good comparison piece as well in a lot of ways. Uh, I kind of quite like the the, um, the acting from these girls. I thought they did a pretty good job here of making kind of believable kind of friends that were a group of friends, all of whom who have slightly different kind of personalities and but they, you can still see the common thread and why they're kind of friends uh, and i and i enjoyed the conversations as i say i think the um you know the idea here of having a mix of kind of more dramatic elements mixed with the kind of like the the goofier kind of schlocky stuff 
Um, you know, I think for the most part worked pretty well. And, you know, there's a reasonable amount of body count here. We, we get some kind of other characters that are introduced. And even smaller roles, there's a couple of guys that turn up. And, uh, you know, one of the guys, for example, is portrayed to be very much against time, which I thought was quite good. And, you know, even in this sort of small amount of screen time, I thought he came across as a likeable kind of character and not your kind of like your typically kind of like written, you know, douchey kind of like horny guys that you get in a lot of these films. The other one maybe, but, you know, at least one of them I thought was um, portrayed to be uh, somewhat against type. There are some quite outrageous kills. I mean, I do have a little bit of an issue with that, but we'll come on to that. But I think for some at least, you know, we, for example, we get a, a scene where someone is literally kind of split in half. Um, so it's massively kind of over the top in certain sequences, but I got a feeling people will kind of enjoy that. Um, so that was, that was, that was all pretty fun, I suppose. And I do think the movie, you know, having this kind of sequence at the beginning where we have this prologue and we have a, a shooting in school. Now, I think that's maybe a little bit of a point of difference compared to a lot of slasher films where we have gun violence. And of course that brings it into, into kind of parallel with the real life situation that there is in America where there is, you know, uh, unfortunately a, a, a high amount of kind of school shootings and it kind of snaps this movie into somewhat of a kind of a, uh, a reality that our world is in at the moment and it kind of like, you know, clearly brings parallels to that. So let's kind of now transition to maybe what I think could have, could have maybe worked a little better. I think that element, that kind of school shooting element was was treated more as a, as a throwaway moment rather, rather than kind of like being more impactful and drawing kind of parallels to real life that it could have been it just seemed like the the we see at this kind of school shooting and it could have been a it could have been a bomb it could have been a stabbing it could have been anything it didn't really i think it, it seemed to be more of a kind of like arbitrary decision to have it on gun violence rather than trying to you know draw parallels to the um the, the, the current kind of climate where we have all these kind of school shootings and I feel had it kind of led more into that it could have been a little bit more impactful in regards to um, you know drawing parallels to kind of real life as it stands at the moment it just seemed like somewhat of an arbitrary decision to have uh, the kind of the inciting incident so to speak be kind of gun violence really more than anything else um, so you know it, it, little, it missed a little bit of an opportunity there I think, and as I've mentioned, and I kind of go back to some of the points that I liked here, there are elements that I feel uh, work well and, and dramatic, and these characters are kind of fairly well acted, but I, I didn't feel like I got a deeper kind of like um, characterization that I maybe would have. I didn't really feel like I kind of uh, super kind of got to know these characters and therefore weren't mega attached to them to a certain degree. Um, I've kind of mentioned the kills. Yes, there is a little bit of kind of CGI blood uh, at times which sticks out because there is actually a reasonable amount of practical stuff here. So when the, the decision is here to make, you know, uh, the odd, you know, added effect with CGI blood, it sticks out a little bit. And speaking of blood, this is one of those movies where there seems to be no evidence. You know, people get killed and, uh, you know, a slash and stuff and someone comes to investigate and there's no blood it's a little pet peeve of mine with kind of slasher movies you know you always think is the kind of the killer now kind of cleaning up the crime scene with rubber gloves and kind of disinfectant and bleach and stuff after the fact I always kind of think of that when we have these kind of situations um, I've mentioned there's some of the over the top kills uh, you know Yes, it's fun, and I think people will enjoy that, but it's it, it kind of then borders on a little bit of parody in, to a certain degree. Now, I don't think this movie is necessarily trying to be a realistic kind of portrayal of a serial killer, a slasher. It's trying to be schlocky. It's trying, I mean, I'll look at the title, you know, The Pillow Party Massacre. But it's the, the, the odd thing for me was the kind of the, um, it has these kind of warring tones to a certain degree. Because it's sometimes it is a little kind of goofy, and I've mentioned there's a, it's a scene where someone is literally kind of chopped in half, like head down to groin, you know, and then splits in half. And we have to consider the strength of someone that it would take to do that. Uh, and there's a couple of other there's other instances as well. 
but then we have sort of saying dramatic scenes as well. So they're some, a little odds with each other at times, I find. The, the tone is a little bit kind of mixed. Not so much so that it's um, distractingly bad, but it's just, it's just noticeable to a certain degree. And the other thing I would say is, I mean, the movie doesn't really, it doesn't reinvent the wheel in any way. I mean, it's, it's obviously made for fans of this kind of uh, slasher kind of genre. And certainly uh, homaging, if not remaking, the Slumber Party Massacre. So, it, you know, it obviously seems familiar and kind of like, you know, you've kind of seen it before. But I do think it's satisfying for those of you who want that. You know, if you want a movie like the Slumber Party Massacre, kind of like a, a, a Scream movie that doesn't really try and do anything different, but that gives you more of the same, you enjoy it. You know, so if you like a certain meal, you know, you just have more of the same. It's kind of like, rather than kind of trying maybe something different, you're, you're being served more of the same. Some people might want more of the same, some people might want a little bit more difference. So for me, this is a solidly made film. It's an entertaining slasher film that I think ticks the right boxes for fans of the kind of the slasher genre and certainly fla uh, fans of the uh, sl Slumber Party Massacre. I think, and that's I haven't seen that film, so I'm only kind of judging it really based on this one film. But yeah, it's a solidly made film, if not it's massively kind of original, but it's certainly a, uh, a conflict directed movie. So I'll give this one an above average mark. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.